Welcome to the Spirit of Revival broadcast. I'm Bishop Glenn Collier with New Harvester International Ministries, and I am always so very excited to be speaking to you. The whole broadcast is about an awakening. Us coming to you is about bringing or uh, arousing revival in your heart and in your spirit. We're not trying to please the heart of man. We're not trying to come to be like someone down the street. We're not even trying to follow a particular model. We're not doing that. We're trying our best to follow the Holy Spirit. We're trying our best to yield ourselves to what the Spirit of God desires. Because we believe that it's the Holy Spirit that's lacking in the church today. I believe that this nation should be seeing much more of a revival. When you think about the sex trafficking that's going on in our nation, when you're thinking about the abortion rate in our nation, when you think about uh, the drug uh, epidemic in our nation, when you think about the division within the political uh, arena in our nation, when you think about the state of the church, and if we're honest, that's yours and mine. We're not where God, I believe, really desires us to be. And there must come an awakening to us. There has to come something that shakes us out of this thing to wanting to be like the world, sound like the world, have the things of the world, and have God. I'm going to tell you something very clearly. God is never going to allow you to have him in the world and the world. You're, you're not going to be able to have God and everything the world has to offer you. He will make you make a decision. He will make you make a decision. You know, we were just talking about, some of our pastors, we were just talking about that how Jesus walked through the land. And many were getting healed and saved and delivered. And to think about this, when he made a statement that challenged where they were, can you imagine this? It says, and many left him that day. Can you imagine? The creator of the heavens and the earth. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God and all things were made by him. This is the same Jesus. The word of God, heavens and earth were made by him. The spoken word of God. And it says, and the people left him. There were many times when Jesus would turn around and say things like this. Listen to this. They're following him. They're hungry. Uh, they want more food. They want more fishes. They want more loaves. Pretty much like today. We want more cars. I want more houses. I want more lands. Lord, bless me with this and bless me with that. As if God exists to bless us. Blessings come just by following God. Blessings come just by walking in the divine, the divine order of God. Blessings come without you having to try. What we need is a spirit of excellence. Blessings flows off of you lining yourself up with the will of God and the word of God, operating in a spirit of excellence to the best that you can. The divine order and blessings begin to flow. And so God's not trying to get us blessed. He has no problem with blessing us. These people left Jesus, the son of the living God. And I'm telling you today, if you begin to preach, pastor, the truth of your word, of the word of God, there are some people that's going to leave your church. And if we're honest, that's what many of us are afraid of. And so we stay away from messages that convict the soul. We're living in dangerous ground right now. There are things in the Bible that God says he hates. I don't care how you look at it. I can, you can send me all the hate mail you want to send me. The word of God still says for a man and a man to be together. It's an abomination before God. Did he really just say that? Yes, I just said it. That's what the word of God says. He says it's an abomination before God. Now let me, let me just say this to, me, to you. The real love of God is not desiring that you would continue in it. I know people have twisted that to say that God loves me and he wants me to have this. 
But I'm telling you, it's the opposite. His real love knows that if you continue in anything that he considers an abomination unto him, he says that it will bring destruction. So it's not just man with man. That, that's a man with a woman before marriage. It's the same thing. I know you don't hear these things in churches today. They stay away from it because they want you to keep coming. But I'm saying to you, man of God, we got to preach the truth of the word until conviction falls. Everybody's not going to come out, but there are some people that will repent. And I'm telling you, Jesus did the same thing. They followed him for the fishes and the loaves because he kept blessing them. And then he turns around and he makes a statement like this. Unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you have no part of me. And the Bible says, and many left him that day. It's no different than the day. When you start speaking the truth, there will be people that will begin to leave. And that's what we're afraid of. But the opposite of that is there are going to be people that's going to be saying, like Peter said, you have the words of life, Lord. There's nowhere else for me to go. Now, this is what Jesus did. The ones that remained, he said, come with me. We're going to the next city. He didn't run after them. He didn't run after the ones that decided that I'm not, that's too much of a commitment for me. He didn't run after, he went to the next city because more needed to hear the word of God. And I'm saying to you, that's not the only time. Listen, listen to this, listen to this message. And he that puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not worthy to be my disciple. So God says, if you're going to take a hold of the real life of God and you begin to desire the things that are in your past, you're not worthy to be my disciple. That's this loving Jesus that everybody talks about that he would never do anything like that. Let me tell you something. God is looking for committed people. He's given a decision and a choice. That's what he's doing. I wish that all men be saved, the Bible says. But you have to make a decision. Come on, glory to God. Salvation is free. But living for God will cost you. Living for God will cost you to make godly decisions. Sometimes you got to leave. Listen, look, how about this statement? Unless you, uh, unless you leave your father, your mother, your sister, or brother, you have no part with me. Another version says, unless you hate your mother, father, sister, or brother. Right? You have. Or you, you love them more than me. You have no part. Wait a minute. That's my mom. That's my dad. Jesus is making you make a decision. And right now, he's making you make a decision. You want to step out of where you are into the fullness of God. He has something waiting for you. And it's called the real power of God. The real Holy Spirit. The living life of God coming to you. Let me say something. You can't carry that kind of anointing. And live your life also. Oh, you can't do it. You got to make a decision. I want all of God. Or nothing. Are you here with me? So look at this. Let me go to John and 15. John 15 and verse 26 and 27. Look what it says. And when the comforter will come. I will send him unto you. From the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. And you also shall bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. Now listen to this. I'm going to send you a comforter, and he will testify of me. And you will also bear witness with him that I am the Son of God. That's the divine union of the Holy Spirit in you. You can do nothing without him. And he waits for you to yield and surrender so that you can glorify Jesus in a real way. What a holy calling that you have. That the God of the universe would come inside and dwell within you. And you would carry this incredible God with you everywhere that you go. This is how revival moves about. You see, revival doesn't just come out of the sky. Revival comes from a, a place where somebody has been crying on their knees to God. 
Someone has been turning down their plate. Someone has been praying. Someone, well, everyone else is doing their agenda. Somebody is crying out to God for souls. And in that, in doing that, there's the presence of God that comes down upon the person. We call it the anointing. We call it the anointing. That word anointing, it means to smear with oil. In the presence of God, God is smearing you with his holy oil. He's smearing you with a supernatural power that only comes from heaven. That delivers people in bondage. That delivers people. It brings a purity to people's lives. People begin to come out of darkness into the marvelous light of Jesus Christ. Into the marvelous light of Jesus Christ. The anointing empowers a man or woman to function supernaturally. God Almighty. God Almighty. And to do supernatural things to the glory of Jesus Christ. Revival, as I said earlier, is not something you chase after. It's something that you become in God. So we know that the Holy Spirit, throughout the book of the New Testament, God is bringing the Holy Spirit back. And he's telling people, I want to indwell you with this supernatural power. Oh, glory to God. I got to a point where I got tired. I got to a point where I said, Lord, it's got to be more than this. I got to a point where it says, if, if what I'm seeing out there is all the Holy Spirit can do, Lord, there's got to be more than this. I want to see people healed. I want to see people delivered. I want to see people come off drugs. I want to see people to be born again of the Spirit of God. Do you believe that with me? Do you believe that that's what God desires again in the church? Then, what, then go with me into this place where make up our minds that we're not going to do anything else. We're going after God. If people want to come and sit in the church for Sunday for an hour and they think that they've done their religious best and go home and do whatever they want, you make a decision that I am going to go after the heart of God because I believe the Bible. And the Bible says that these signs will follow them that believe. These signs will follow any man that believes. Glory to God. I come to realize that the same spirit that quickened Jesus quickens our mortal bodies. The same resurrection power that raised them from the dead, Jesus said, I've given to you. I've given to you. Glory to God. I've decided I'm not faking it any longer. I'm not pretending to have something that I don't have. God, if you don't come, if you don't show up, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I'm believing through these airwaves right now. There are some people that's going to listen and get upset with me. Because you're not used to someone coming at them like this. But there are other people that are sitting there saying, my God, there's something different. There's a spirit that's on this that's making me pay attention. It's causing me to think about where I am, where I stand, where my life is. I'm hearing the life of God. Jesus said that out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. L rivers of living water. So Jesus now is moving his disciples from this place of just being fleshly, walking in the flesh, thinking in the flesh. He's moving them to this place where he's getting ready to ascend. He's telling them, I'm getting ready to die, but I'm going to leave something. I'm going to give you something. I can't even give it to you until I leave, until I return to my Father. But if I go to my Father, I am going to leave you the Holy Spirit. And He is going to come, and the first thing He's going to do is convict you of sin. Come on, people, let me tell you something. Never run from conviction. Never run from conviction. Come on, let the Holy Spirit have His perfect work. This is the reason why. So that you can be purified. It's conviction excuse me, that purifies this condemnation that brings death. Excuse me. I am not thinking, I am not speaking of condemnation to you. I'm speaking life. I'm speaking life. Glory to God. And how do I know it? 
See, I can't point a finger at you because I know where God brought me from. I can't point a finger at you because I know even as a believer, I still do things that may not please the heart of the Father. I don't willfully do it. It's not my heart to do it. It's kind of like Paul. The things I know to do, I find myself not doing. The things I don't want to do, I sometimes find myself doing. Who shall deliver me from this? Therefore, there's no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And this is why I'm wooing you to begin to walk after the Spirit of God. Because there's no condemnation to any man that begins to walk in the Spirit of God. There's no condemnation. I want to be pure before God. I want to have a, I want to have a pure heart before God. I want to be like David. Lord, clean me. Purify my heart. Come on, make me white as snow. That I might teach your disciples... To follow your ways. That's my heart. I want to be authentic. Is that you? I want to be the real thing. I want to have the real power of God. Is that you? Well church. That's what needs to happen again. Many people are lost in the world. You know they tell me that the millennials. Are kind of turned off with church. Now listen to the reason why they're turned off. Because when they go to church. It's too much like the world. And when I come to church. I want to find God. And when I come, I don't find God. I'm finding the same things that I find out here. So why should I come into the building? Millennials are turned off. When they come to church, they're not expecting the same thing that they have in the world. When they come to church, they want to hear something that's going to truly convict their hearts. They want, they want something that's going to bring significance to their life. They know that there's something greater than them. And they want to know who this person is. Who is this that's greater than me? Is it real life in this person? Can this person really deliver me from where I am? Can, does my life have purpose? Is there destiny for me? That's what they want to know. And I'm telling you today, if you're listening to me, there are many people sitting in churches right now. They may not like what I'm about to say. But somebody may be sitting in your place. They're hearing the word of God over and over again. But listen. But they're choosing not to change. They're choosing not to be transformed. And you come in. And you're, 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 you're coming right out of the world. And God says, I have a place for you. You don't even realize that before you were born, I already had a call on your life. I already ordained that you would be with me. I already ordained that you would carry my anointing, my presence, and my power. Some of you that are not in the church today, I'm telling you, you are going to pass some people that's been sitting in churches for years. It's something about a person that comes out of darkness into the marvelous light. See, when I got saved, I didn't get saved until I was 32 years old. 32 years old. So you're a young person out there right now. If you're 25 and you're saved, you're going for God, you're much further than, than I was. God's going to use you greatly. But when I tell you that when the Lord delivered me, it was over. There was no playing around. See, I met a power that was greater than any power I've ever experienced. I, I met a power there was a deliverance that I needed that nobody could deliver me. My mom, my dad, nobody could deliver me. And on my knees, I met a king. His name is Jesus. And he revealed himself to me. That's over 30 years ago. Now, how many bishops would even speak like this? Some of you, some of them, you look at some of the bishops, you think they never did anything. They've never been a part of anything. They've always been like that all their lives. That's not me. Glory to God. So I hope this gives somebody hope. If you've been on drugs at some point in your life, I'm going to tell you something right now. If you think you cannot be delivered, I don't care what it is. If it's pornography, I don't care what it is. If you can't stop lying, Come on, if you're living in a situation and you don't know how you can come out of it, if it's healing, it does not matter. The power of Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit is able to heal, able to deliver, and able to set free.
My God, my God, my God, my God. And so here Jesus is giving the comforter, the Holy Spirit, and he's telling them to go. And his Holy Spirit is going to begin to work with you. The Holy Spirit is going to begin to work with you. Hey, 2 Corinthians 4 and 20 actually says this. For the kingdom of God is not a lot of talk. It is living by God's power. It's living by God's power. When Jesus said that I'm going to give you a comforter, he was saying, I'm going to give you a helper. I'm going to give you a comforter. I'm going to give you an advocate. I'm going to give you an intercessor. I'm going to give you a counselor. I'm going to give you a strengthener. I'm going to give you someone that will stand by you always. Hallelujah. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty God. Come on, if any of you out there and you have been bound in drugs, I was too at one time. Oh, glory to God. It's been 30 years. But let me tell you this. He's kept me for 30 years. Now listen. When he visited me. When he visited me. I said how awesome his power is. I can't tell you the, the amount of money that was spent just earlier that week. But I'll tell you this. When he revealed himself to me. When I got up from out of that place of crying out to God. And, the key tra and, and I knew I was transformed. That power, the way you see me now, this is how I've been for 30 years. The way you hear me talking, the, 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 I, could, uh, I wish I could have my wife stand here and witness to the fact, because she was with me when God delivered. Matter of fact, she got saved the same day. This is how powerful God is. The same day he delivered me. The power of the Holy Spirit came down and set a man free. Took the desire away. Took the desire away. The power came into my life. It was over. I was convinced there was nothing else greater than my God. There's no one else that can do what he can do. And then he tells me that, son, these signs will follow you as you believe. He says, son, greater works than these shall you do because I go to my father. He says to me, I am going to anoint you with power from high on high. And the same way I delivered you, I will deliver hundreds. I will deliver other people. And they'll come out of darkness into the marvelous light. And I'm speaking to somebody tonight. I'm speaking directly to your heart. It may not be drugs, but it's something else. And God is wooing your heart. Something is drawing you right now to hear this. You're called of God. And you have a holy, a holy calling. I'm speaking over your life right now. You're coming out of darkness. You're coming out of whatever you're bound in. I break the hold of it off of your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The power of the Holy Spirit is coming into your room right now. Listen, go ahead. Just begin to surrender. Say, I don't know how to do that. Just lift your hands up to God. Right where you are. Right where you are. Lift your hands up. Say, God, I don't know clearly everything he's saying, but I know I want you. I know I need you. And Lord, here am I. Here am I right now. Here am I. And you give yourself to him. Say, Lord, I surrender. I'm giving you everything. I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. I don't know how I'm going to live holy, godly, but I trust your power. Your word says if I confess you, that you will receive me. And so, Lord, tonight I surrender. I yield myself to you. If you're backslidden, I'm telling you tonight is your time to come back. I'm telling you, if you fell away, it's your time to come back. The Holy Spirit is wooing you to him. He's wooing you to him. So I, I want to say to you that uh, continue to follow our broadcast. The messages are going to become more and more in the book of Acts, where you're going to see not only God's power, but you're going to see uh, example after example of God's power coming in and delivering and saving people. The church needs to come back and it needs to regain its prophetic voice once again. You may not know this, but there are many prophetic voices out there that, that, is, that the nation is waiting on you. The nation is waiting on you to come up and to come forth. God is calling you out. 
God is calling you out. God is calling you out. All right. Let me say this. Stop living in two worlds. Stop living in two worlds. You can't live for God and live for the world. Make your decision tonight. Hey, listen, why not let your life be spent for God? I'm, I'm talking about when you get to the end of your life, there's nothing left. Everything that 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 you were supposed to do for God you, is, 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 is there. There's nothing left on the table. You spent everything. You spent everything. There's not a person in the world that should have all of you except God. I'm talking about your husband or your wife. There's not anybody in the world that should have all of you, everything, the very essence of your being. Matter of fact, you're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Inside of you, there's one place that only God can dwell. No one else can dwell there. That is created by God for him to be inside of you. And I'm telling you tonight, if you yield and surrender, the Holy Spirit will come to you. We thank God for you. Thank God that you're going to follow this ministry. I want you to write me. This is Bishop Collier at newharvester.org. You write me and tell me if this is challenging, and provoking you, and if you're coming into the things of God. I do have two books. Uh, somebody's going to come across the screen that tells you about the books. This is one called Intimacy in God. It would help provoke you and bring you into the things of God. It can be purchased on Amazon. Hey, listen, one day you come visit us. We're in Swanee, Georgia. We're a simple church. We're a family church, but we're hungry for God. If you want the usual, the common, you're not going to find it there. But if you want something from God, you'll find it. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you next week.